This will be a demonstration on placing datums. When I go into my part, if you recall when we created the sketch in the pad, um, the bottom line, this line here is datum A and this is datum B. Let's just double check that. This is datum A, this is datum B. When I exit out, it's not really the line that represents datum A, it is that entire bottom surface. That is datum A, this is datum B, and this is datum C. So on my drawing, this is datum A, this is datum B, the face we're working on is datum C. Again, when I go back here and I go into my sketch, this is datum A, this is datum B, which matches this view here, the primary view, whereas this is datum A and this is datum B. And datum C is the sketch face you're working on. If you recall, I always have you reverse the direction. So when I reverse the direction, this is datum C. Again, the bottom is datum A. Datum B is this side and datum sorry, A, B and datum C. It isn't always this way, but you can start off as a general rule for the parts we're going to be making. It's pretty typical that we would have the bottom A left side B and the face we're working on datum C. Again, when I double click this, you see all the dimensions here are on the front. So when I go to my part or the drawing, this is the front view. If we didn't reverse this and we had left this this way, the front view is the YZ plane and we would be dimensioning the back of this view on the front view. Now does that make any sense? No. So that's why we establish this being reversed. Okay. So now to apply the datums on the drawing. You want to uh, first make sure the tree doesn't have the yellow symbols telling you to update. If I were to go to annotation right now and try and put on a datum, it's going to do weird stuff like this because it's not updated. So I'll hit undo, right click this, sorry, uh, let's just hit update up here. I think I'm stuck in datum. Let's escape. Right click here and I could hit the update. So contextual menu and hit update or just hit update feature on the bottom. That's this feature down here. Just update the drawing. Because I went into the solid and I was inverting it and such, it knows that I did something different and it wants to update any changes that I've made in the drawing to whatever I did to the part. So now when I go to the datum, I can select this line and establish that as datum A. Establish this line as datum B. Okay. Datum C is this front face, but I can't call it off here. So when I go to datum, I can establish this as datum C. All right, so now I've got my three datums established. Again, keep in mind, you want to keep these lines all about the same length when you're making this. Now, I'm going to have you add three more unnecessary datums. I just want to make sure you understand which datum is which. So if I were to select this datum and put on a datum here, it automatically uses D. I'm going to click a datum here, whoops, datum this line, 
over here, and then datum this line here. By the way, I'm just putting a location and clicking a location, and then the green check, you just click again to say it's okay. If I were to ask you to edit the dimensions to the proper names, would you know what dimension is which? So this line and this line are the same line. They represent the bottom of the part. Therefore, this is datum A. This is datum A. So I'm going to double click on this. The datum feature up on the top of the screen allows me to edit that. I'll change that to A. This datum B lines up with this. So this F would be changed to a B. This is datum C, so therefore this is datum C. I'll type in C. Under sketch, again, if you were to create a line from corner to corner, see that that lines up this way. That edge is the same edge in that view. Those are both datum B. This is the top view, but this is still the left side of the part. Okay. If I were to create a line from here to here, see datum A is in line. This is the bottom and this is the bottom. This is the front face. According to chapter five, we use third degree projection, which means that this is going to rotate so I see the steps. So in other words, this view here is rotating in this direction. That is my right side view. In fact, if I go here and hit front, this view aligns with my primary view. If I go here and I hit right side, this right side, let me try and shade with edges. See these edges here? that would be these edges here that's flipping it 90 degrees this way this is the top view so this view here is me looking straight down on the part if I were to go to the space model and I were to hit the top view that's looking well I hit ISO view pick the top view that's looking at the very top of the part so again this is my side view Viewing it this way, this face, this face, and this face is the faces you would see in my right view. And on my top view, that's what it would look like on the top. These faces are the faces you would see on the top view in the drawing. Okay, so it's important that you start learning to get your perspective on what datum C is. So if I create a line from here. from here up and I make that vertical and I create another line from here over see these faces are what connect these two views together if I were to create a line from let's say here over and another line from let's say here up I'm trying to get a vertical line. See, that would represent the back side, and that's how they were related to each other. If I create a line from this intersection, which sometimes is a pain here where I'm at, to this intersection, that line is called a miter line. That miter line is what connects those two views together. I'm going to undo all those lines. I just use those lines to get perspective. <gasps> of how these views are correlated. So these are your datums. Now, the primary view is going to show most of the dimensions. So since this view has most of the dimensions, datum A and datum B are necessary. Datum A would be the unnecessary datum in this view. Datum B would be the unnecessary datum in this view. 
which is the necessary datum for C? Well, if I have a dimension here, I'm controlling the depth. Whoa. Why? Let's hit escape and try and get into the right view. I'll double click the right view and see if I can't dimension. It should have popped in there anyways. Why? Oh, it, I did some undoing and I screwed up my material. Damn it. Let's see, if, if you get your material screwed up, you might be able to right click and hit open material and see if that doesn't fix that. And that question mark went away, so now it looks like it's okay. Perhaps now I can come in and, huh, it's not forcing it, it's not asking me to update. Why can I not dimension this? Oh, I did something to my drawing doing a bunch of undos. So I'm going to continue on. If you have the dimension for the depth on this view and no dimension for the depth on this view, then this C is the primary C it's necessary. If the dimension were on this view and not a dimension on this view off the datum, then this one would be the unnecessary one. I'm going to imagine I put all my dimensions on the primary view and this view over here. Well, let's see if this will even work. I'm going to go to double click the right view so it thinks I'm in the right view. And I'm going to go to annotation and we're going to insert text. And I'm going to click a location and type in 100. I hit enter. If I right click on the 100, I can go to properties. Under properties, there are several tabs. On the top, I'm looking for a tab that will allow me to change the frame. If you see in the top left corner, you see the text frame. You can choose a frame. I will choose right angle, right flag, and say OK. All right, so now I've got a flag note pointing to this. I'll come up here, and I will add a flag note by selecting the text here and clicking a location. I'll type in 100. Again, what I did is I did a right click and I went to properties. Under text tab, change the frame from none to right frame. Select OK. Now, I'll move this so it looks like that. The thing is, what is active in my tree right now? Notice that right is highlighted in blue. Even though I'm looking at this like this, if I go to view and turn on my frame and move the frame for the right view, see that 100 note text is over here. It's in that view. It seems odd, but that's what was active in the tree. So Katia assumes you know what you're doing. So you placed it way up there in the right view, assuming you knew, knew you wanted to do that. I'm going to hit undo and undo that last text. So when you do that, you must make sure to activate the correct view. I'm going to click on this. When I double click that bar or double click top in the specification tree, this is now my active view. Both of these are unnecessary. So I'm going to go to text under annotate. Click a position, type in 100, hit enter. Now, there's another way to do this. Some people like this technique better. When I do a right click, display, action pad. This action pad comes up. If I select this text, huh, what how? Not action pad, I'm sorry, but I am a little concerned why it's empty. Display, object properties. Okay, 
right click anywhere on the screen display object properties under object properties I'm going to change Oh, now I don't see it. Oh, there it is. So you almost have to know what those are. Um, you can also put your cursor on each one of these icons for your tool tips. But this can be a little faster if you have this up and you know you're doing a bunch of them. I'll do a frame from here and use this one here called the right flag. And then create another text over here type in a hundred and I just quickly pop back over to this frame and go back to the right text this should be right here in front like that about even same with this one and now I've identified the three flag notes that are not necessary now I want to put another flag note over here in my general notes now to do that you have to go to sheet right click and edit the background so that I can be sure to put the flag note that goes over the title block in the same background as the title block you'll know you're in the right title right background because it turns gray again I go to text click a location type in 100 you can either right click on it and go to properties or display your object property And then you got to find under text the frame mode, hit the down arrow and choose right flag. Okay, and then I'm going to insert new text. And I'm going to place it right here in front of the flag note. And I'm going to type in, or I've got a little cheat sheet thing here for you to copy paste. Copy paste this flag note in here. This gives us an opportunity to understand what flag notes are. I will go to where it says knowledge up here in this window and hit shift enter to get the second line going and hit OK. I'll move this text up a bit. Right click the sheet, edit background. This flag note identifies the fact that you knew you weren't supposed to put all those datums on there you just had to prove to your instructor you knew where the datums really were on all three different views okay and it gives you uh, an understanding why you use flag notes so anytime you're doing anything on the screen you you have something specific about a dimension or specific note you want to talk about you don't put the dimension sorry you don't put the notes on this on the on the screen you put the uh, un, under the view you put the flag note there so instead of me typing all this out right here you have a flag note to refer to a note that you want to say something specific about that dimension or text or note that you've inserted into the drawing all right so that is your tip sheets on how to insert datum features on a drawing